Michelle Sisto. I am a professor at Ada Business School for over 20 years. I am a professor of data analysis in the MBA program, and I am also the director of our new ADEC AI Center. Um, our vocation is to infuse all of our programs with AI uh, and to do research on how AI is transforming professions of the future. Oh, lots of things. I, I started AI when I was an undergraduate in the late 1980s. Um, I was studying expert systems at the time. And the incredible acceleration and advancements that have been made over the last, say, 10 years, but in particular the last three or four, um, I've really seen that this is a technology that is going to revolutionize the way we work, the way we learn, the way we interact with each other. Uh, and in fact, I took a sabbatical year to really just focus on that. So I'm very excited about the potential of AI. I'm also quite nervous about the power of AI, and so I feel like it's part of our role as educators is to heighten awareness amongst our students of both those risks and those opportunities and start to get them into the mindset of the future of working with AI systems. First of all, we've revamped the entire core curriculum of the MBA to start integrating AI across the entire curriculum, precisely for that reason. Um, whatever role, whatever function, whatever sector our students are going to be operating in, they're going to be confronted with digital transformation on a wide scale and in particular on AI. So we want them to have a very clear awareness of what are the types of classes of problems that are treatable by AI, what is not treatable by AI, what are the energy consumption uh, requirements of AI, or the environmental impact, what's this potential social impact of this. Um, and, and in leadership positions, one of the keys is going to be how do you accompany people across this huge transition and, and upskilling that's going to be necessary. Um, so we want all our students to have a broad understanding of that. Um, in the track in particular, um, what we're focusing on are three different elements. Uh, so the first part is a course on uh, digital transformation and leadership. So it's really about, from a strategic point of view within a, a company, how do you deal with digital transformation and how do you do the change management with your people that's associated with that. That's key. No, no matter how great the technology is, if you cannot accompany people, it won't, you won't have a successful project. The second aspect it's going to change every year because AI is accelerating so quickly and it's going to be more technically based. Um, so this year we're focusing on agentic AI. Um, if you're following this in the press, this is the year of agentic AI. So not just how can you use AI to do a research or to you know, create an image, but how can you actually start using AI to be an assistant and to create AIs that can actually carry out actions and what's the implication of having an AI that can carry out actions. And the third part is always going to be an applied project to either a particular company or a particular industry. Well, they'll put into place, this is the, the type of problem we're facing, these are some of the approaches that we could use using different AI systems, and how would we put that into place, what would be the change management and also the technical implementation aspects that we need to consider, and how will it be uh, integrated into the strategy of this company or this sector. You know, I can share perhaps one of the things that we've been doing internally at the school here at ADEC is managing that change management. So we've run programs for all of our staff and faculty just to get everybody over the hump of trying out using generative AI and, and making people comfortable talking about how am I using this, what am I using it for, and asking each other for help. Um, one of the biggest, uh, let's say, um, adoption barriers is fear and people feel like, you know, I, I don't know how to do this. Uh, what's really remarkable with AI now is that you don't need to have the expertise that you once needed to be able to use it. If you can speak in natural language and you can ask good questions and you can structure problems, then you can use generative AI in, in quite an efficient and successful way. Um, so we're just trying to get people comfortable with using that. Um, and that's not an easy endeavor. Um, this, the second aspect is that there's a lot of fear of being replaced or displaced by AI. Um, and that also holds people back. And so by uh, helping uh, both students and staff members and faculty to realize, well, there are certain things that AI is adapted for and that can help you either augment your thinking, 
go more divergent thinking when you have something, you know, a project or a seminar to put together, look at, show me five different ways that I could approach this. Or you're looking, thinking about an argument. Give me five different perspectives. And then you're using your own critical thinking to go through and synthesize those and broaden the way you're thinking rather than just delegating your thinking to the machine. So we're trying to get people to think about how can I use this to augment my capacities and not just to replace or automate things that I do. Um, so I think for our, our, our MBA students, being able to have that mindset and be in that practice will serve them well in leadership positions, but will also serve them well in being able to get future collaborators on board with some of these tools. Despite all of the, the, the incredible advances with AI, people do not get joy from having their tasks be done faster or having them be automated. We, we get joy from interacting with other people. Um, so I think part of what, what's good, and, and, and from self-fulfillment, there's a certain amount of, of cognitive struggle that we need to go through to know that we've learned something new and we've grown. And if you're delegating to AI, you don't have the joy of that self-fulfillment. Um, so part of what we're trying to get students to think about is that, first of all, create interactions, whether it be in the workplace or in school or in your community, create very specific and proactive situations where you're just working on human connection. Um, second aspect is to make sure that when you're using AI for certain things, you're very clear with your colleagues why we're moving to an AI solution for this. What is it allowing us to do either better or potentially faster or differently from what we could do before? And how can we rethink potentially our processes so that we can then take our time and our skills to focus them on something else that would leave us greater time for that rich sort of human interaction? I think one of the fears we've already seen with social media, with its social media, instead of bringing people together, it's also tending to isolate people and put us into echo chambers. AI has the same potential. Um, AI is not a sentient being, but it can mimic empathy extremely well. And many, many people are, are going to AI for friendships using you know, character AI, replica AI. And I think part of our role in, in education is to get people back into understanding the importance of interacting with each other. Um, so I think there's a lot, of, a lot of risks from the social interaction perspective that we need to be very wary of. Um, human AI interaction, I think, is going to become quite common. Um, one of the things we're trying in the MBA is avatar tutors. Um, I've created an avatar of myself. Uh, that poses tremendous ethical questions. Um, how do I give the background prompts so that this image of me doesn't go out and carry on inappropriate conversations or give advice on areas that I would not want to be giving advice on. How do students interact with an avatar of someone they know relative to someone they don't know? So we're also trying to start to measure that human-computer interaction and get their feelings about it and have our students think about those kinds of things because when you get to the workplace, you know, for example in Japan there's been robots in, in hotels for a long time. Certain cultures are more accustomed than others. How do you feel about that? What does that say about the culture? What does that say about the service that we're doing? So really trying to get our students to think about all of those aspects. Um, and then of course there's the, the EU AI Act and different regulations uh, from the US to China to the EU, very, very different approaches um, in terms of both legal and ethical uh, perspectives. So make sure our students are aware of that. Um, Notably, in education, uh, the EUA Act says anything related to admissions and giving people opportunities with decision-making through AI alone is, is not allowable. It's a high-risk activity. So we need to know how, what kinds of activities uh, have which types of risks and how do we integrate that into our business processes. I'd say the track starts at a different place now than it had in the past because we've integrated so much across the year. Um, tooling, they're, they're, the MBA students are introduced to the very beginning of the year with an AI bootcamp. They use it throughout their courses and they have an AI for business strategy course looking at a roadmap for a company. So when they come to this particular track, 
they're at a point where they already have a broad overview of what are some possible tools that they can use and what, what in terms of a company, what's an AI roadmap look like. So when they come, the idea is that they're going to work on a very specific, let me get my hands dirty, get into the matter of it on a specific case. And so they begin with the digital innovation and leadership course. So that's all about people. You have a roadmap, you want to put this into place. How do you do that from a leadership perspective? The second part is all about upskilling on hard skills. For that part, we are typically going to use external providers for some of that because the tools in AI are shifting extremely quickly. And so external providers who, who stay up with that constantly are going to be more agile than our professors. The role of our professors is to take a wider step back and look at more of the impact and overall structural organization of these tools. So they'll spend some time on that, and then they'll spend their time getting into a very specific project with a specific company where they will have to come up with an AI solution for that company and talk about not only how, would we create, how do we create the solution, but how would that solution integrate into that company's processes and what would be the associated change management needs. So it takes really the, the, the overall structure down to a very specific project. And our aim is that coming out of the program, they will have uh, elements to talk about and, and go into interviews and go into companies saying, I understand what it means to do an AI project implementation. I would say there's several answers to that. In terms of their mindset when they leave the MBA, regardless of the, if, which track they take, we want them to go out with a mindset where they're valuing humans, they're valuing human interaction, they're asking excellent questions, questions about not only what can we do, but what should we do and why should we do this. So a very clear, ethical, environmental approach to problems that they're going to face. Um, in terms of mindset relative to AI, we want them to come away, first of all, with a clear idea that our, there are classes of use cases for which AI can be a real booster and there are many problems for which AI is not going to be a helpful solution, or which in any case the marginal addition of AI is not going to be worth either the, the, the cost or the environmental cost of implementing there. So to make wise decisions as to where we should implement AI solutions and where we shouldn't. Um, and of course, where they're putting in a solution that their, their view of the problem should not only be on the technology, but should be on what if we go this direction, what does this mean for all stakeholders, for the people in our teams, for our external customers and stakeholders, and for the planet and environment? So if they come away with that, we'd be delighted. Let me tell you a little bit about the professors that are engaged and how we run with that. Um, so Karen Collins, who's the professor in charge of the digital innovation and transformation track uh, um, course, she is a longtime consultant. Um, she's a professor in strategy and innovation, and she's constantly working with companies on projects. So sometimes she will bring in certain projects. Loic Menviel, he runs the industry project in the AI track. Um, he's also the chair of our digital, I mean, our healthcare management chair. Um, and it really focuses on how is the digital revolution impacting connected health. Um, so he also works with a number of companies and hospitals and local and national governments. Um, so they both are sources of projects. Um, sometimes we source projects through partners with the MBA, um, the MBA academic director. Um, he also teaches the AI for Business strategy course, so he may also source projects. I may source projects with the ADEC AI Center. Um, so there's a, it's, it's a diverse group of people um, who are sourcing projects for these types of, of activities. Um, sometimes we're looking for large, like IBM, we've worked with in the past. Um, IBM sometimes gave us projects. They gave us particular courses that the students could take. Um, this year we're looking at a, a small and medium-sized enterprise, because uh, that's really where we're seeing a lot of companies at that level. They don't have the expertise internally, and they see this as a potential competitive advantage. So we're trying to get students to work on how might they help these companies to move forward. Um, so there's a diverse, diverse uh, set of people and, and possibilities for sourcing the project.
There's a couple of things that, that really brought AI to the, the, the public, uh, public level of, of, of interaction on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, certainly the arrival of ChatGPT in November of 2022 was huge. Um, and I think that the biggest change in this generative AI relative to previous versions of AI is that you no longer need to have expertise in coding, in machine learning, in deep learning to be able to use this type of AI. Um, AI that's been in industry for you know, years and years and years on the typical machine learning, robotic process automation, you needed to have more expertise and it was for a specific use case. With the arrival of generative AI, you only needed to be able to interact in your natural language to ask questions. The machine responds to you in natural language in a way that you understand. And that natural language is across a multitude of languages. On top of that, previous types of AI were more specific or narrow AI, specific use cases. Now you can go to Generative AI and plan your vacation. You can ask it to dialogue with you on your, your strategy, your strategic note on something that you want to implement it. You can ask it to generate images for a project you're going to do. You can talk to it about potential financial approaches and data analysis, so it's health healthcare. You can talk to it about virtually anything, and that is a completely different situation than we've ever been in before. So I think that's, that's why it's so much in the public mind right now. So in, in you know, 2030, five years from now, AI is going to be integrated across industries, sectors, and functions. Um, and it doesn't really matter which industry sector or function you're going to be in, somehow AI is going to be impacting that. So by coming to do an MBA, you will both be ready to approach that world in 2000, 2025, but even in 2030. You will learn the agility that is necessary to understand how quickly things are going, become comfort, have a certain comfort level with change. Most importantly, you'll learn how do you interact with people across these changes. How do you deal with people from different cultures, with people coming from different backgrounds, and how do you lead those people under situations of great uncertainty? The only thing we can be certain of today is that there will be great uncertainty even five years from now, and that AI will be part of that. And if you come prepared to open yourself to those changes, you'll go away from here with a solid background to, to embark on your next steps.